start in the music industry? Man, my start. My start in the music industry. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of weird. Like, wait, what was the start? Like, I kind of started. I just I remember always wanting to do music. Like, and, and, and as a kid, I, I don't know. I just remember watching Kids Incorporated. I think back when I was around maybe eight, seven, and if that's the correct time. And I remember looking at this show, and I remember I was like, I want to do that. So um, it had to be before the fifth grade before I played any instruments, and um, I wrote the show. I mean, you know how they say order the cassette tape or the album. You know, at P.O. Box Richmond, you know, I wrote them all these letters and even sticky notes and they never answered back and I was crushed. But I remember on the show it was Fergie. She was just one of the girls and it was um, Rashawn Patterson was the black guy who did the Michael Jackson songs. And um, I followed him for a minute. And then um, after that, anything music, I just put myself into. So fifth grade, when they say, you want to play instrument? Yes, what you want to play? I play trumpet. So I played trumpet for years. And in between that, anytime I got any money or Christmas, I asked for music equipment. And then, you know, from there, you sparked the interest of other kids in your neighborhood or in your school. And then we started producing and sampling, like, you know, at 10 or 12 when hip hop was, I think, at its most finest moment, you know. Um, um, and I just did it every day after school. Um, I hustled my way into uh, performing arts school. Um, uh, they didn't have a course in performing arts, of course, if you want to be a music manager or producer, because this is when Teddy Riley and uh, all these producers, that name was getting kind of big. And I was always the kid ever since now, looking at the credits and like, oh, who produced this and what's the production company? So I went to Suitland High School. And I basically went first year as a university student, which is like a college prep program, it was a magnet school. Then the second, I figured out who was the influences, and I came in and sung in an audition, and I was horrible. And I basically was a smart addict, and I was like, hey, okay, what? You're not gonna let me in? A magnet school is to bust white kids and black kids so it could be more evenly dispersed, right? I was like, are you gonna deny me my right for this program? They was like, but you're gonna fail. It's gonna be horrible. You can't really sing. And I was like, let me do that. Let me decide that. And basically, I hustled my way through performing art school. I learned music theory, piano. I was around real creative people. I mean, real talented people. And um, my teacher said one day, she said she knew I wasn't as talented, but she knew I worked hard at determination. And she told the class one day, she said, you're going to be more successful in the music industry than anybody in here who has ubers of talent. And um, it's funny. She's passed now, but... Uh, on Facebook, I always get messages from people who was in that class that day to say she was exactly right. Um, um, she probably started my love for Prince because she thought Prince was a genius before I really was in the Prince Prince. I liked the movie, but she would talk about the chord progressions and um, how Prince, you know, was studying, you know, Baroque and chamber music and how and she would show me the parts where it was in the music. And she told me one day, you're going to, from you singing opera in this class or chamber choir music and all these different things, black negro spirituals, you're going to be able to be great at whatever you do in the music industry because you're going to be able to identify where a lot of these sounds come from. So that's really what I feel like my true start is, that whole section. Um, my first official job, if we're going to start from internships, when I went to college, I went to Hampton because basically uh, Teddy Riley was in Hampton, Virginia, and I had got accepted into Howard and a couple other schools, uh, Penn State, and um, I was going to go, I was on my way to Penn State uh, doing uh, television production or whatever, communications, and um, I remember a young lady came into the class, uh, I respected a lot, named Sarita Harris, and she... Um, I was crying. She didn't get in. And I knew she had good grades. She was a cheerleader, probably a B average student, B plus. And I guess Hampton didn't accept the B plus female, black females. There were so many of them. So they kind of started from the top of the top. And then they would take kind of the C plus students who in a lot of activities to kind of give a balance to the campus. So she just fit in that criteria of you'll get in somewhere else anyway. And she cried. And I remember that night. Uh, I saw a report, maybe on MTV, maybe BET, that Teddy Riley just moved, Rump Shaker was out, and they moved to Virginia Beach, and I was like, Hampton's about 30 minutes away from Virginia Beach, 30, 40, maybe, and I was like, I'm going to Hampton, never seen it, told my mom, she was like, it's expensive, I said, I know that's where I want to go, and my whole goal was to meet Teddy Riley, and I did, my freshman year. Um, I formed a production company with Chris Henderson called Hunglo Productions, and we ended up working on um, Black Street first album. Uh, Chris did a remix to Before I Let You Go. Teddy stole the idea, never gave us credit. I don't care if you see this, Teddy, that's what happened, but it works. You know what I mean? You know, it, it was a good lesson and we're still friends to this day. Um, and then from there, I ended up getting an internship with Def Jam. 